when any new technology comes in, inevitably there'll be people who suffer and there'll be people who can't adapt to that new technology. Amateur radio has actually changed. In the olden days, most people built their equipment. These days, a lot of people just buy the transceivers because they're now extremely complex. It's not like the old days, it's not AM, it's single sideband and a lot of other modes. You can actually buy radios that have got GPSs and things like that in them now. And the complexity, you can build up something incredibly complex and switch it on that doesn't work and you don't know where to start. Whereas with the old components, you can pretty much, uh, well, you can run test prods on them and you can work out what's going on. Especially with students, we had older students came back who'd had some analogue experience, found digital very difficult because it was hard to comprehend it was so simple. And what you must remember, back in the 50s when I was a kid, you could actually have a general knowledge of everything in radio. Communications, radar, you could understand it all. These days, of course, you can't. Because the devices we're dealing with now are so much more complex than they were 10 or 15 years ago, we were reduced to treating whole sections of them as black boxes. Nowadays it's been manufactured in like bigger blocks if you like. People no longer have the opportunity to pull apart old black and white TVs and use the individual components. A lot of electronics can be quite specialised with um, you know, high frequency radio and so on. I, I, went, I moved fairly quickly down the, the digital electronics part because it, uh, in the late 70s, 74 series chips became readily available and 741 op amps and triple five timers. And so it was very much like Lego, but with electronics. So you could put together these high level components. Oh yes, integrated circuits would have had an enormous impact because it allowed you to do things that took a lot of individual components were now put into one little tiny chip. And even with the introduction of integrated circuits, there were still, and there still are, I mean, lots and lots of kits that you can find in silicon chip that use an integrated circuit to do some task. As soon as integrated circuits came in, we could do so much more with electronics. And the other direction then became calculators and memory because memory was easy to design because it's highly repetitive calculators were something you could people wanted and you could make a lot of them and so far more experimentation was possible with the digital circuits and that opened up a bit of a revolution of course and it was in fact from the calculator chip that the microprocessor evolved the age of the microcontroller has it left people behind certainly left me behind microcontrollers really are the big new thing since uh, i guess the 1980s microcontrollers have invaded every part of electronics. It's more about firmware now than the electronics, especially with the microcontrollers, because almost everything comes in in parallel. And therefore, how you want to use it, it gets programmed. And that's, that, that's OK, though, because it simplifies the connection. I couldn't cut code to save my life. That's a lot of the old timers really prefer to deal with just straight electronics and straight hardware and they don't necessarily want to deal with microcontrollers. I actually made a conscious decision back at university when everybody was getting absolutely entranced with their programmable calculators. I didn't want to be caught up in programming, I was just interested in what I considered at that time to be electronics. We've got to drill down and see what really is electronics. You go back to the telephones made and then to communication devices, the vacuum tube, the transistor, the integrated circuit, the microprocess, they're part of applying a technology to human needs. But whether it's programming or whether it's electronics, it's it's merely blurring the back the, the boundaries you'd have to say between between programming and electronics. And I guess that's where electronics is going. I think we've reached a point where there's this uh, things that we've um that have been created throughout history where the knowledge of how these things were, were were put together is becoming lost. You know, we don't have the source code of that piece of firmware anymore. Or in the case of the, the Apollo landings on the moon, where they had the tapes of the of the, uh, the landing, I think the machine to uh, to read those tapes is, is either one left or, or perhaps none. A lot of people try to see what makes something tick. But even your car, if you pop the bonnet on your car, it's just a mass. And you don't understand what anything does there, you just shut the bonnet again. I think that, 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 that we just that we've modularise things to the level where possibly the experience isn't there for the those who want to learn about it. So I feel a, a lot of the very creative spirit that people are exploring in their own you know in their own mind was that it was served by electronics is now being served by other ways. It's a lot harder to actually get in inside the technology. So where we do get into it, I, I guess, is in, in software and, and things like that. They're playing with their computers and developing websites, and that's the equivalent nowadays. Whereby an old valve radio, a crystal set, or something simple, it's there, it's open, it's in front of you, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it. 
you can play with it. The, the technology today, you can't do that anymore. If you look inside your uh, your iPhone or something like that, if you dare, you know, there's something that drives a speaker. But again, it's, it's probably already integrated totally onto the silicon. The whole subject of electronics has become so complex that people now have to specialise, inevitably, and that's a great pity. If you're a specialist in communications and cell phones, there's a good chance you'll know nothing about how a DVD player or a CD works. It's also specialised. It's different today. In the same way as diesel and petrol supplanted steam, there's still room in the world for steam engineers. And in the same way, there's still room for the old guard such as me who only do analogue electronics and really don't understand these newfangled micro things. Well, I don't see that they, they can actually scrap the analogue completely. I mean, that, that's your building block, that's your fundamental, and that's your, your, your basis for technology. You need to know it. Whether you use it or implement it, you still need to know it and have that grounding. The difference today is, of course, with microprocessors and with digital techniques, you tend to buy most stuff. It's very hard to, say, build a, an iPod from scratch. You can't go to the Dick Smith shop and buy the components and get out the soldering iron and build it. That would be impossible. Kids have moved on to, say, computers and iPods and digital music and uh, electronics has changed it, it, its form and, and the interest just isn't there the way it used to be. The hands-on approach isn't there. The activities are still there but it's not, it's not growing, it's certainly not growing, it's diminishing. Computers have definitely changed the face of electronics. Oh look, computers are definitely the distraction. I mean there's only so much time in the day and you, you see the kids are on the games, they're on whatever site, they're on chat books or whatever. Definitely that's taken the, the hobby interest uh, away from the traditional ones that we used to learn, which for me it was electronics, for someone else it might have been woodcraft or something. In these early days of computers you really had to know what your components were, how they worked, how individual components worked. I think the, the hobbyist was interested in the technological change, but you know, I mean, what's under the hood, right? I mean, that was as big a question as what the computer did or what games or whether it supported VisiCalc. It was what was under the hood, all the memory and, and all the, the details of the electronics. You couldn't just buy a little black chip and assume that it would do whatever you wanted it to do by just guesswork. You had to know a great deal about what was inside the chip. Programming, for example, even the simplest programming, meant getting down and dirty with the actual elements of the microcomputer chip. You had to know what the register did, how they did it. You had to talk to the chip in its own language, which is noughts and ones. Or you could use a form called hex, hexadecimal. These were times when it was really quite a Mensa test to get the smallest computer to do the smallest thing. The link between electronics and computers is, is total and complete. Up until very recently, computers required a reasonable amount of expertise to make them, to make them uh, to function, to keep them functioning. And it's only really been in the last couple of years with uh, smartphones and the iPods and iPads that the, the computers are really starting to become a bit of an appliance. Even when you bought a computer, the electronics were still very much a part of it. You know, unlike today when it's essentially consumer electronics. You know, back then you really had to know about all the stuff. And, and I think it was also part of the cachet. The downside for an electronics nut is that computers have eliminated the need for doing any electronics because the computer has it all in it. We didn't need to be building it ourselves because it was already available, already perfected and already tested. Computers have taken away the hands-on electronics, the old school radio. You get out there and build something yourself and you make it work yourself. Nowadays it's all in software. You can simulate a lot of things. Pretty much any piece of electrical equipment you buy now has a computer in it or multiple computers in it, no matter how simple it is. I think computers as we knew them are, are almost long dead. The computer's disappeared in many cases. It's just embedded. It's a component. You can now have a computer in your homemade robot. You can have a computer running your garage door controller and connected to the internet. I never thought I'd end up writing programs for computers, let alone computers that were embedded in pieces of equipment. Everything's become more complicated. Your microwave oven. You've got to learn to drive your microwave on. It's ridiculous. I mean, electronics has just come so many bounds, I can't even understand how it can work. Look at the technology change that's happened from this moment now back 20 years ago. I mean, you know, 20 years ago or, or 30 years ago, there was no ATMs, there was no computers. You know, people's desks in an office were just literally a desk and some pencils. As a barrier to entry of not having um, access to more of the fundamental components, I think you do lose a sense of what it takes to build a more complex system. Electronics these days has evolved, devolved, I'm not sure which, to being a form of systems engineering. So there still is a hobby market, 
but you're using complete packages. What we do in terms of hardware, uh, it's become less fun in a way because you've only got a few things to solder up. Electronics is no longer about connecting discrete components. Electronics now is about interconnecting modules and systems. Now, you use the term, say, electronics loosely, they may well be realising their ideas by bought-in components, but systems. You're buying this as an off-the-shelf, like a carton of eggs. It's like I'm buying a block of CPU power. Take some of the fun about it, you know, doing the customised electronics. There's less people that know how to do electronics because so much of it's already done for you, you can buy it off the shelf. It's it's exciting from some one point of view, but it's also, you know, moved electronics to a smaller part of, you know, the industry because the computer side of it's so much more important and bigger. So I don't know, it's had positives and negatives, but ultimately I think every product benefits from from what's happened over the last few decades. So I think it's exciting. Which is a long way from soldering transistors and resistors together, but it uh, still allows people to build their own thing. It's a bit like building PCs. I mean, I always tend to build my own PC because you know, one thing fails, so you replace that and you get it with a better one. So you upgrade it slowly. It's, just, it's an evolutionary process. Certainly the way we're manufacturing devices discourages people to open them and, and to learn about them. It, it's it, it, No doubt it's less accessible. You, you can't really get in there and make use of the individual pieces uh, of your stripped down iPhone. It does in a way uh, encourage people not to be inquisitive about how things work because computers back in the old days were very technical, very difficult. You had to sort of massage them to get them to work but now they just work out of the box with the Apple experience and the, the, the whole thing just working. The, the degree of integration you see, you look at your mobile phone in the last 10 years, how more sophisticated it is. It's simply a function of the, the functions inside that microprocessor that manages your phone. On the one hand, this means that there is an opportunity for people to do more challenging things, in other words, to write new applications for their iPhone or something like that. So that there's still the opportunity for creativity. On the other hand, one can be concerned that there is no real knowledge of the underlying technology that we become dependent upon others and we have to take what's given to us. This is sad because this means a whole lot of ingenuity, ability to experiment. It does mean that we are likely to face a very strange future in which only little spacious cadres who run the computers to design the computers will know what the hell is going on. But I think, I don't know, I don't know whether it's just whether the building blocks just get bigger. I mean, if you look at it, you know, as soon as the new iPhone comes out, some guy strips it down and, and lays it all out, and, and you still can see the elements that it's built up from. The, the problem for the people who've come up through this process of building things from those most primitive components is that as the level of integration gets greater, we, we are concerned whether the underlying knowledge is really lost for most people. Electronics, where if you look at a circuit board, often you will not know if it's even powered up or not, and all it consists of is little enigmatic black shapes with wires or little connections between them, and it's not clear what is going on, is magic to most people. Magic, and it's getting too complicated for them to ever catch up. It's so difficult these days for somebody to open up a product and say, ah, that's how it works, they're impenetrable. You open up a product and it's a PCB full of completely cryptic little black boxes soldered onto a green circuit board and there's very little that you can do. Back in the day, of course, you'd open up a TV and there are lots and lots of discrete components and you could identify what each one was and what it did. Same as, I guess, you open up a clock, you could identify what, what role each cog plays in a clock. Uh, that's no longer true, so it's pretty hard to capture somebody's interest when they're young in how does this stuff work. The, the people who are inquisitive about that, those sort of things, I don't think it's going to stop them. In, in fact, the new uh, hacker revolution where people mod their gadgets is just growing and growing and it can lead from there. You hack your iPhone, you jailbreak your iPhone and that leads into stepping stones into uh, how it works into electronics and eventually designing them, hopefully. It's only been the last, uh, well, less than five years that the concept of open source hardware has really started to take hold. To get existing products, open them up, find out which blocks and modules they can modify or interconnect to make new and different things. Because it's open, we can then um, 
start to uh, pull them apart and learn, learn how these things work and, build, and, and put them together in different ways. The opportunities for hacking and learning and doing wildly different things are far greater today with today's technology. In spite of the fact that we've lost a large consumer electronics industry, the opportunities for somebody who's willing to have a go, to use their mind, to learn, are just as good as they ever were. The barrier to entry to learning electronics has still remained the same. It's basically come down to someone's willingness to learn and the ability to access the parts and education they need. Getting down to basics, do you put together resistors or transistors to make more complex circuits? I think um, it's almost like the calculator and slide rule thing. I think people now have more functionality to start building even more complex uh, systems. So what used to be to build together a crystal radio and trying to get maybe a very simple computer up and running, now you have a computer with an amazing amount of processing power and you can actually get it to do things, which is almost what you desired to do back then but you couldn't do. So I think uh, now I think the, the opportunity for people to put together very complex uh, systems is now more affordable and more achievable. So.